Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game from Stonemeyer Games all about making wine called... Wrong game. Tapestry is a one to five player game, not about making wine. So don't let that confuse you. This game is not about wine making. If you want to play that game, that is a completely different game. Not about wine. So Tapestry is a one to five player game where players are trying to be the best civilization throughout five different eras. And the way you're going to be doing that is you're going to be learning some new inventions. You're going to be getting some landmarks. You're going to be conquering some territory, you're going to be exploring, but really what you're going to be doing is you're going to be moving up, moving up on some tracks. So this game is tracks. It has cubes. What else does it need? Not a lot. So let's go down to the table and I'll show you. All right. So here's a game of tapestry, all set up for two players, kind of. What I'm going to basically do is I'm going to show you all the blue players turns and I'm going to kind of simulate a, a green players turn and I'm not going to play the shadow variant because I just kind of want you to see how a normal round takes place. So to set up you're going to give each player a player board. You're going to give all four of these color buildings are going to be set up accordingly. All your resources will start at zero. There's food, workers, gold, and prestige. Each player will take a civilization. So in this case I'm the nomads. Your extra pieces can hang out somewhere over here. Uh, and then you're going to have a capital city board which is going to reference the city that you start on so i had one in six so i had both those those boards i picked one in this case i picked the mountains you're going to put each of your cubes on the starting locations on each track the conquer dice here science die here you're going to put two of your civilization markers on your home city so it can never be conquered and you're going to start at zero all right so now the first thing that everybody's going to do on their turn is an income turn really easy Normally on an income turn, you get to do a whole bunch of things, but the very first one, you just do this. You get all these resources, so you get a gold, a worker, a food, and a prestige. And then you're going to get a free tile, and you're going to get your first tapestry card. Tapestry cards are basically the, the driving force of this game. I have Steam Tycoon. They're going to be able to be played face up here to affect the rest of the game going forward. This other player would do that same thing. And then we would go. So on your turn, you have one of two actions that you can take. You can either take another income turn or you can move up on one of the tracks. Basically, you're going to pay the resources, move to the space, do the thing. So in this case, first thing I want to do is I want to conquer. So to do that, I move my, my little cube up here. I have to pay any resource that I want. So I'm going to pay food. And then I get to take one of my little civilization markers here and put it on an adjacent discovered tile. So in this case, I'm gonna put it here. Then you get to roll these dice. So when you roll the dice, you have a couple options. You can either take four points or you can take a resource. I'm actually gonna take the resource to make my first round last a little bit longer. And that's it, that's the end of my turn. Then green would do their thing. They would just move up here, they'll roll this die. Then they get to move up again, but they don't get the benefit. So they're starting to move up the green track, trying to race me to get some buildings, I guess. Then it's my turn again. I want to, I think I want to discover. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pay a gold and I get to take two tiles. So I take two tiles and they kind of look like this. They're going to have a terrain on each side. So in this case, it's all water and they're going to give me a bonus when I build it or put it on the map face up. So I get a food in this case. So they're all going to look something like that. So those are my two tiles. And that's the end of my turn. It's Green's turn again. They actually want to conquer as well. So they'll come over here. They will go here. They'll roll. They're going to take the six points. All right. So that was their turn. Now it's my turn again. I can do anything that I want. Anything that I want. I'm going to explore. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to pay a resource to explore. I have a bonus to get a tapestry and I will do that. So I will do this gold and this worker. So I'll take a tapestry card, my second, which is good to have options. Oil magnate, which is cool. And then I get to explore tile. So let's put down 
this food one, let's put it right there. So I have one water, two water, three water, so I get three points and I get a food. So now I have prestige and food on one and that's my turn. All right, now it's green player's turn. Uh, they are just going to move up over here. They're gonna take one of these cards because invention cards are good, but that's okay. That'll give me something new to look at, a light bulb. All right, so now it's my turn again. I have a food and a prestige as my only resources left. So what do I wanna do? I'm actually gonna go here. I'll come here. I'm gonna pay ones of something. I get another tapestry card. Give me some more options going into income. Trap, those are really cool. Um, that will let me defend off somebody attacking me and try to topple my civilization. I can play my trap card and instead I topple them and I get a resource, pretty cool. And then I paid an extra resource, so I'll pay my extra prestige here, and I get to build a red building. All right, so now, using my special power, I'm allowed to build buildings out on the map instead of over here. Normally, you build over here trying to fill in rows and columns and the nine or three by three cube to get resources. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build out here, and now this makes it so this cannot be conquered. That's my special ability. And whenever I do that, when I build where there's um, another pillar, I get a resource of my choosing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a red. Doesn't matter because everything is generic cost right now. So that's my turn. Green's gonna go ahead and move up one more up here. They're gonna roll a die again and they're gonna move up on military. So now they're here, but they get no benefit for that because it has an X. Now I have one more turn. What do I wanna do? I'm gonna conquer. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna conquer, so I will send one of these guys out here. That cost me my last prestige. I will roll, and I will take seven points, because seven points is awesome. 10 points, all right. Done. Uh, okay, so they will just move up over here. Take two tiles, so they'll take two tiles. All right. Done. Now it's my turn. So I'm going to do income. The way income phase works is rounds two through five are kind of going to look the same, mostly. And you're going to do these certain things in the following order. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to activate your civilization ability. I don't have a civilization ability that activates now, activates during the game. So I can ignore that. Next thing, you're going to play a tapestry card. So I have three cards in my hand. Steam Tycoon, Oil Magnate, and a Trap. So actually what I'm gonna do, which is kind of crazy, I'm just gonna play a trap. So I can play a trap as a tapestry. It comes right here. I was the first person to go into income, so I get any resource that I want. I will take red. Then when I play this card, I get 10 points. So pretty easy, I get 20 points. I have 20 points now. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to upgrade one tech card. I don't have any tech. If I did, they'd be over there on the X. I can move from the X to the circle or from the circle to the square if I met the square upgrade criteria. Then I will gain victory point on income mat. So right here, I will get one point per in per tech card. Don't have any tech cards. One point per completed row or column. I don't have any of those. And nothing else over there. So I don't get that. All right, then I'm gonna gain income, which is pretty easy, just like we did at the very beginning. So I get a gold, I get a worker, I get a food, then I'll get two stars. All right, and then that's my end of my turn and it would be green player's turn. You're gonna keep going like this through five rounds. Uh, the fifth income phase is a little different. You're not gonna play a tapestry card because there's no room, and you're not gonna get income, but you're still gonna do your civilization, you'll still upgrade tech, you'll still score your points and all that stuff. Then at the end of the game, whoever has the most points out on this track is the winner, and that's it. So it's a fairly straightforward game with pretty simple actions, but a lot of thinking going on. And one more thing I didn't say, once I cross this threshold, I would get this building. So I would get the building from the red one, which looks like this, and I could put it on my map, somewhere like that, and it would take up four spaces to help fill in. First person that goes there gets the building, there's only one building. So when green gets there, they wouldn't get to do it. So it's kind of a race to get those buildings. Other than that, you can always do what's on the track. That's tapestry. Let's go to the top, see what we think about it. All right, well, that was tapestry. Uh, first off, let me say, when this came out, it had a ton of buzz. It came out of nowhere, 
it was hailed as this huge civilization game, so I was automatically turned off. I saw civilization, I saw minis, didn't give it a second look. But then, you know, all time goes by, I watch some videos, I say, wait a minute, that looks like tracks the Euro game, and I think I might be into that. So I decided I needed to get myself a copy, and I needed to play this to see how tracky and how Euro-y gamey it is. So what you saw on the table was the experience that I had. This is a game about creating a civilization, kind of, but really what you're doing is you're just trying to move up these tracks as far as you can to score the most points. Yeah, it has some civilization trappings, a civilization theme, but it could have been about like collecting marbles and trying to have the best marbles that you could have, or maybe collecting animals or trying to be the best wolf pack you could have, whatever. It could have been about anything. They just tap, happened to tap, tap the, the civilization theme on it and it's cool. But before I get into what I think about the game, I just wanna talk about the art. So this art is from Andrew Bosley. And if you look at this, it'll look like another game. And that other game is about some animals. They live in a big tree. There's berries and twigs. It's called Everdell. So if you look at this cover, it's very Everdellish. So I like it. The art in this game is amazing. There's not a super ton of it. There's civilization cards and pretty much this box, but it's nice. So now let me talk about the game. This is essentially a Euro game. There's no civilization to it. Yes, you have a civilization. Yes, you have a power. It's a Euro game. You're moving on tracks. You're collecting resources. You're doing things. You're conquering. And the conquering is like the nicest conquering in the world. Um, you're going to go to a place if it has one little pillar and you may be able to knock it over. Or they may have a trap card and knock you over and take a resource. That's it. Once a space gets two, two little pieces on it, it can no longer be conquered or moved into. Pretty easy. Toppling you doesn't do anything negative to you. Doesn't do anything negative to your opponent. Completely irrelevant. It's just something you got to do to meet some in-game goals. Now, I didn't talk about the in-game goals in the playthrough. The, the first person to reach the end of a track gets 10 points. First person to topple two enemies gets 10 points. First person to make it to the middle island gets 10 points. So you're also, while you're trying to score the most points on tracks, you're also trying to maybe keep an eye on those because that could be 30 points and that's huge. So this game is really fun. Um, it's not what I expected, which I'm glad of because I didn't want a civilization game. I didn't want a minis game. I wanted tracks the Euro game and that's what I got. So I, yeah, I dig this a lot. Um, I would probably give this game, I don't know, it, it's gonna be my top 100 for sure. And if I was going to rate it, I would probably give it a seven and a half out of 10, which means it would be BGM accepted. Three, 3.75 wrenches out of five, and it will be staying in my collection because it is very fun. I've played it solo three or four times, and I played it at two players once. And at all those player counts, well, the two player counts that I played it at, it was fun. A two player game and a solo game are pretty much identical, except you have some Automa cards that you're flipping to show you what the other player is doing. But yeah, this is a really fun game. I like Euro games. I like tracks. I like cubes. I like combat that's not really combat. The minis I could do without, but they serve their place because you're doing like a little Tetris thing on your board. And yeah, this is great. I like it. So that's Tapestry from Stonemire. BGM accepted. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. And as always, keep gaming. Upside down. <laughs>